So the Southwest Coast Path is the longest of 16 national trails across England and Wales, traversing 630 miles, that's a thousand kilometres, around the coastline of the Southwest England. Our national trails are world-class long distance paths, helping people access, experience and enjoy our finest landscapes. The designation of a national network of long distance paths followed the establishment of the National Health Service in 1948 and was intended to contribute to the nation's well-being post-war as a natural health service. So 70 years on, we're seeing recognition of the importance of trails in delivering access, environment, tourism and health and well-being benefits for the public good. To help communicate these benefits, we've undertaken research in the impact of the coast path. From a visitor economy perspective, our latest research shows almost 9 million people using the coast path a year, generating over 520 million pounds for the local economy and supporting around 11,000 jobs. Trails play an important role in communities' health and well-being, and it's estimated that each year the Southwest Coast Path generates over 75 million pounds physical health benefits to its users. And we're now looking at how we can calculate a value for the mental well-being benefits of walking the trail and initial est estimates show this to be even higher. So, so we have a trail impacting on a large number of people, communities and businesses generating hundreds of millions in public benefits, which dwarf the public grant of about half a million received to maintain and, and enhance the trail each year. In the southwest, we're lucky as we have a charity and wider trail partnership to generate extra funding to support the trail. We're also living in challenging times, as we've already heard from other uh, speakers, with ever increasing frequency and strength of storms impacting on the coast and the cost for maintaining the trail. And also climate change is impacting on the biodiversity of trails, and this is raising the management cost to maintain our national trail quality standards. And then last year, as we've already heard from several of the other speakers, the pandemic hit us. And it's a story many of you will recognise with lockdowns increasing local use of trails and when virus control measures were reduced, the urban populations who have been stuck in cities for the past few months all made an escape for the coast and countryside and often at well-known popular sites. With so many services closed, this caused significant impact at specific sites. However, there still were many parts of the trail which were more remote and didn't have the same experience. So the pandemic has revealed issues we already were aware of in terms of equity of access and trails, and we need to rise to this challenge to ensure that those who can't access trails are given an opportunity to, uh, to access. And I'm talking less about physical accessibility and more about the issues around health, loneliness, confidence, transport opportunities and costs. For an example, uh, public transport has been significantly impacted by virus control measures, and yet for many, it's the only way of getting around the coast path. Amit discussed active travel earlier and the UK government is investing 2 billion in active travel. My call to government is that our extensive network of trails and public rights of way need to be part of the solution to help reduce our travel footprint and improve health and well-being. Thank you. And now on to Nat Scrimshaw.